This is the Forest Car Show. Welcome back. And we have something I've really been looking forward to. Uh, I am a registered independent voter. Now, I, I used to be a Republican. I was Republican since I registered to vote way back in. Well, I'm not even going to tell you. But let me just say that I, I have only voted for one president who's actually won. All right. And that was the two votes I cast for Ronald Reagan. Since then, I have not been able to pick a winner. I did not uh, register as a Republican when I moved to Arizona because the nation's politics were getting so divisive and so polarized and viewers are becoming more and more suspicious of their journalists that I decided that, you know, it's best for me not to declare a party and not to declare a loyalty, just to remain independent uh, and not to even think about it, just to try to just cover the news as objectively as I possibly could and try not to think about what I really think and suppress those opinions. Now that I'm a bloviator on the radio, I don't have to suppress nothing. And I can declare a loyalty again if I'm so inclined. So I have uh, asked the Republican Party to come on for a recruitment effort aimed at me and people like me, independent voters. We are now the largest voting bloc in the state of Arizona, read recently. So this is uh, the Republican Party's chance to bring me back or people like me back. This is what we're going to talk about for the next little while. We will not be taking calls. We'll just uh, have this conversation this is the Republican Party's chance to recruit you if you're an independent, if you're a Democrat, to bring you over. And who's joining us right now is Carolyn Cox. She is the chairman of the Pima County Republican Party. So thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you, Forrest. Appreciate uh, the opportunity. By way of introduction, just give me a little bit about your background and how and why you came to be and wanted to be uh, the chairman of the Pima County Republican Party. Well, you know, I've been a businesswoman for many years. Uh, my husband and I had an insuring firm in Denver, and uh, I, I certainly do understand how the business world works. Um, I have been always been a registered Republican. Um, I just believe in the precepts that they have. I think of the idea that we need to be an opportunity society and not a welfare state. And I just see us going more and more in that direction. And I don't like it. And I would like to fight against that. Um, and I think the Republican candidates, while not perfect, uh, think more along those lines. I think they think more like Ronald Reagan did. You know, he made his speech in 1964 about the same time that um, LBJ was starting to think about his war on poverty. And um, Reagan basically said that the, you know, that a big government is not the solution, that the solution is that the, the government provides the rule of law and that kind of thing. And you let the private sector figure out <clears throat> what's going on. And I think that's, that's where I am. You know, during the Reagan administration, and I was a big fan of Ronald Reagan, still is, love the Gipper. But um, he got killed at the time for what he called trickle-down economics because yeah. that was his philosophy, too, that he believed right. that you, you let the private sector do its thing and the benefits will eventually reach the people at the, the bottom tier. Right. Uh, the people at the bottom tier didn't necessarily feel that way. There were bumper stickers at the time <laughs> popping up, I recall, called nuke the poor but uh i would say it's be fair to believe that you believe and the republicans to believe that you, you make the business sector profitable and strong that yes. good things will follow for everybody is that yes. more or less correct? It, it really is and in fact michael tanner has just recorded a video it's on the prager university uh, website but it's called the war on work and i think that's what's happening to us we are it, it just seems like that when you make welfare appear to pay so much more than you can by working you you get people sucked in to uh being on welfare and uh it you'll never get out of poverty if you stay on welfare i mean they've shown that the the level the poverty level has remained about the same for the whole 50 years since the war on poverty uh, theoretically started and uh, Tanner makes a good pace, uh, you know, a good point for that. And they spend almost, with the federal and the state combined, about a trillion dollars a year to uh, pay people to stay on welfare. And and I think it's a very unrewarding lifestyle. Um, Arthur Brooks, you know, talks about earned success. I think people miss that. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't like the way our country is going right now, and I'd like to see that change. Well, you know, I totally agree with you about that. And I've got a, a, jo a blog entry posted on my blog, uh, the, all the reasons that, that I no longer support the president that we have right now. Uh, but I'm undecided about whether I want a Republican or just a better Democrat. And so here I am, registered independent voter. Now, what I'm hearing you say is the Republican Party believes in strong 
business, which is, I mean, that's capitalism, yeah. right? That's what this country right. is supposed right. to be about. And it's not crony capitalism. Right. It's true competitive capitalism. In other words, I don't like the fact when big companies like GE and people like that go to the government and wanting, you know, certain kind of favors and that kind of thing. I don't like that. That's crony capitalism, and that's not what I stand for. I stand for total free markets. Okay, so here I am trying to decide what party to belong to. And I'm hearing you say business should be strong. Mm-hmm. Country should have the work ethic that made it famous. Made it, right. made it prosperous, made right. it a, a leader of the world. Okay, and yet most voters probably are not bosses. We work for bosses. And so uh, my question would be, okay, so why would I be in favor of a party that's basically going to do something for my boss? Because, you know, my boss is kind of mean to me. <laughs> so, so what would you say to somebody like me when I say, you know, I really want protections from my boss. I don't want my boss to get a goodie. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, you have to understand, having been a business owner and operated a business, we also have fears about what happens to our employees. We figure, okay, we've trained them. They're really good at this job. And then they go down the street and get a job for maybe 10 cents an hour more. Uh, so we have competition, too, and we have things we worry about that, that we don't get, uh, that, you know, that we wouldn't get protected But I still believe that, I mean, and, you know, people much smarter than I am, uh, uh, like right now, only two and a half percent of the people who work are in at the poverty level. So really, a job is your path out of welfare. And I think that should be the goal um, of, of any system. And, you know, we've seen um, we've seen that the kind of things that um, the current administration has done, like trying to um, uh, didn't let Chrysler suffer a bankruptcy like it should have and be following the rules. They just came in and took over. Well, they hurt a lot of people uh, in order to take that money and give it to the to the uh, unions, the Chrysler unions. A lot of, we hear a lot of talk about the, the income disparity, the income gap. And mm-hmm. We're hearing more and more about it all the time income inequality and as an average voter in pima county and i'm I, you know i'm certainly not rich um and it this, it does bother me that the rich seem to be getting richer and 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 i question whether sometimes whether they're paying their fair share on the other hand as a middle of the road uh, mm-hmm. uh middle income type of person and and someone whose politics are strictly middle of the road i also do have a problem with people sticking their hands into my pocket and taking stuff out if they're if, if i don't perceive them to be deserving so I'm on the fence. Tell me why I should join the Republican Party and how doing so will address the concerns I just stated. Well, I think the concerns that you have uh, about income, we, we have to understand that you cannot arbitrarily, the government cannot arbitrarily tell an employer what he has to pay because the employer has to deal with all of the other facets of of. Um, uh, you know what are their what are their materials costs like if you're a fast food person you've got to you know buy the food you've got to rent your space you if you have a franchise you had to pay something for that franchise so it's not like that everything that you get is profit in fact the profit margins are fairly small and when you go and dictate all of these things um, to the employer like the cost associated with this Obamacare if it ever really uh, gets implemented um, and dictating the wages, you cause businesses to contract and say, okay, I'm not going to hire, I'm not going to open a business here. Uh, you know, we see this right locally. We see that Tucson is probably the sixth poorest city in, uh, in, a, in the size in our nation, and yet we've got Oro Valley and Marana that are booming and the difference is that Tucson hassles people when they're trying to open a business. And Marana and Oro Valley say, welcome, come in, we'll help you. We'll help you get your building permit. We'll help you do whatever you need to do. Right, so circling back, around, yeah, circling back around local, let's, let's hit that subject a little bit more. Because yeah. I know when I was the TV news director here at one of the TV stations in town, we did a lot of stories mm-hmm. on the fact that uh, the Tucson City Council and the Tucson uh, City bureaucracy put business owners through so many yes. reams of paperwork and through rolled so many logs at their feet exactly in term, in tries again you know you got what was one of the things that that uh, the council did that it was so proud of i got to have a, a a rain storage system or something now i mean th- <laughs> all these things that i've got to do just for the privilege of starting yeah. a business here right and if miranda down the street saying well you don't have to do that that stuff here and uh, and you know you can make a lot more money and make it a lot more quickly why wouldn't i go up to miranda so 
Yeah, now I'm deciding, trying to decide which party should I join. Okay. Tell me how picking the Republican Party is going to help me with that issue. Okay. Well, just even look nationally. Look at the states that are controlled by Republican governors compared to the states that are controlled by Democrat governors. And the ones that are controlled by Democrat governors are running huge deficits. They're, they have promised things they cannot fulfill. And most of the Republican-run um, states, uh, Oklahoma, Kansas... Uh, where they have Republican governors, uh, Rick Perry in Texas, are booming. And so as you as an employee, if you don't like your job and there are thousands of other jobs that you could take or different people that you could work for, you have that freedom. When you're stuck in a place that doesn't have very many jobs to offer you, you don't have the choice of moving around. So I think that the Republicans are better at administering, number one, because they don't like to manage, micromanage as much. They're saying, you know, these are the rules and, and let the businesses go. All right, so bottom, so now say I'm a registered independent, mm-hmm. but now I lean maybe a little bit more toward the left. And you're telling me that the Republicans will, uh, would create a more welcoming atmosphere for businesses, but now I'm a little bit more left-leaning. I'm still independent, but I'm a little mm-hmm. bit more left-leaning. And now I'm concerned, well, so we, these, these regulations actually have a purpose. They're, they make, uh, you know, they might make uh, put out environmental regulations out there that are better for the environment. They might uh, get in a layer on extra protections for workers, extra protections for public health, and, and maybe I'm you know okay with that. Um, should I be concerned that that if I join the Republican Party and help with those efforts, that suddenly I'm going to see less in the way of worker protections and. And uh, would that be something that I would need to be worried about? No, I don't think so. I think what you're, what you're, re- what the problem really is right now that the government is trying to over regulate and all of those regulations cost a lot of money uh you were talking about the coal industry well they have really cleaned that up a great deal already and most of the sulfur oxide and the kind of things that are really bad have been scrubbed out uh carbon dioxide i can't understand why that would be declared a pollutant because everything that's green has to have carbon dioxide. That's what it lives on. That's what photo- photosynthesis uses. So I think that it's an it's a time right now of overregulation, and which is hurting us and which is costing business a lot of money. And remember, they don't have unlimited income. So if the regulations back off a, a bit, then there's more money available to hire more workers and expand. And okay, do things like that. So here I am in the middle of the road, and I'm torn over Obamacare. Mm-hmm. Right, because on the one hand, I really think it's a travesty that this country hasn't it, it waited this long, waited until a one party got control of, of both chambers of the Congress to finally do something about the fact that so many Americans were just on their own in terms of health care. But on the other hand, man, I don't really don't like Obamacare because I mean, I, I personally have been adversely affected by it. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily want to repeal it. I sure want to fix it. But, uh, you know, Congress, as of right now, hasn't been inclined to do anything even some good things to fix it that are desperately needed because they're just uh the 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 polarization is so intense okay there's been blockage there so what what would the republicans okay joining the party what would that do for me look like look at what insurance is supposed to be when you buy insurance on your car you're not paying for oil changes and wiper blades and new tires and you're, you're paying for if you have a bad accident then it's going to cover your costs i think that the medical system should work in exactly the same way where you have a catastrophic policy because everybody is in trouble if you develop you know heart disease cancer or something like that but then you have a health savings account to go with it where you are spending the money and when you go to your doctor and you have a health savings account you can even negotiate with the doctor about you know well i can't afford to pay that and back and forth like that. And I think that this is all part of the competition. You look at LASIK surgery. It's never been covered by insurance. It's better today than it was in the past, and it's cheaper. Uh, so that is one area of health care. There's a surgery center down in Oklahoma that publishes their prices on the Internet. Have you ever seen anybody around here publish their prices? No, they don't want you to know because they bill umpteen thousand dollars to the insurance company and then the insurance company says well this is what we'll pay you let's get the third party guy out of there and let's have a just like you go to buy a cell phone you don't need an insurance policy to buy a cell phone 
Uh, and you shouldn't, medical can work exactly the same way when you have it in a, a competitive situation. So I would say a, you have to have a catastrophic policy, but that's not very expensive. And if you're young, it's really not very expensive. And then you build up a health savings account. Usually your employer pays in it too. And when you're When you're older and begin to have some problems, you have a lot of money in your health savings account, and you just pay that directly. Okay. Now, so I'm worried, though, as an independent voter, that if I decide, I'm not happy with the way things are going. No. And there's gridlock, and I know that one way to get rid of the gridlock is to give power to somebody and so that there's no more gridlock. So I'm considering giving that power to the Republican Party. If I do that, if I vote in such a way and others like me vote in such a way that now the Republicans are in charge of both houses of Congress— both chambers, as opposed to the, to the Democrats who, during the first part of the Obama administration, were. Now I'm concerned that the Republicans are going to completely undo Obamacare and put us back where we were before when so many Americans weren't covered. So is yeah, that something remember, I should be concerned about? Just because they weren't covered doesn't mean that they didn't get care. Well, if okay. you're willing to sit in an emergency room for hours at a time, yeah. and also a lot of Americans, I mean, we're the, one of the only industrialized countries in the world that make Americans file for bankruptcy when they have a major medical uh, crisis if they don't have insurance so tell me what where do you see the republican going republican party going if they were to get control of both houses of congress in the midterms where do you think the republican party is going with that and and again coming back to my recruitment theme why should i be a part of it well i think you should be a part of it because i think that we do have to give out the message that we think that what's happening right now is completely wrong mainly because it's not affordable Um, It is going to, you know, I mean, it's going to go bankrupt because you can't you can't use insurance to cover things that are minor. It's just like going back. Your car insurance would be so expensive if you tried to cover oil changes and new tires and that kind of thing. So we have to get back to where we have we cover the catastrophic events. We have something like a health savings account where you can negotiate to pay this. And um, I, I think that that is the only way that, that we can go. But you have to understand that basically not very much is going to happen, even if the Republicans take over the Senate, because the president is still going to veto everything. And he should not have we, he should not ever have tried to submit that legislation when nobody had read it. Nobody had discussed it. Nobody had found out the problems in it. I mean, even the problem now about give, not giving subsidies to someone who comes in under a state plan, I mean, a federally set up plan rather than a state uh, plan, that would never have happened if anybody had discussed it because somebody would have said, hey, we got a glitch here. So his dictatorial methods is what has caused this absolute disaster. Right. And at least we can stop that. And the other good thing is that if you get the Republicans in charge of both the House and the Senate, at least the news media will begin to report what's going on. Right now, they're just giving him a pass. They and don't. I report. know a lot of people feel that way. I'm not giving him a pass. Well, good. But that doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean that, like I said, I mean, I'm, I would be yeah. happy to replace him with a better Democrat. Uh, but I'm also open to Republicans. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so talk about who's going to be in charge. One scenario for the future is, of course, that, you know, the Republicans wind up winning at the polls and they go, they be in charge and they do what they want to do. But there's another scenario that says that maybe we step back a little bit from the gridlock that we're having and recognize the fact that this country is pretty much divided mainly down the middle. We're really a, a slightly right of center country for the most part, but it seems like neither the Democrats nor the Republicans ever gained control, quote unquote, for very long. When we do give total control to one side or the other, it seems like they do, they do us some damage. So we, maybe, tr- we get in trouble. Maybe yeah, it's better. We get in trouble when one side is in <laughs> yeah. charge. So isn't a better scenario bipartisanship? And, and is that something we should think about and do a better job of thinking about as our leadership uh, is going forward? Well, is, see, we've always we had do? bipartisanship before Obama. Because if, if you remember all of the things like LBJ, he had to have Republicans sign on for his, um, you know, war on poverty. I mean, it was that was a bipartisan thing. This is the first time that we have really had basically a dictatorial uh, president just simply trying to dictate everything. 
and whether it's about the EPA or whether it's about health care or whatever. And it, it doesn't work. It's not good. It should be bipartisan. And, and we sh- but we should have an active media that calls out when somebody is violating the law. And, and this current president is not following the Constitution. And, you know, the, I mean, that is what made America the exceptional country that it is, is that it has a written constitutions and, constitution, and it's based on the, you know, the rule of law, free markets. Yeah. What it's well, I, know, I know what my Democratic friends would say at this point, because they said it to me personally. The last Republican president did all this executive fiat stuff himself, and nobody cared, but which we cared now. But it, um, uh, it's definitely true that this particular president has done a lot of things by executive fiat, which has just totally riled a lot of people, including the Republicans. And we're going to talk about one of those things when we come back, because I want to ask you when we come back uh, what you are going to do for me as, an, as a registered independent who's thinking about being a Republican, uh, where you stand on immigration, where we're going with all of that, and we'll talk about social issues as well when we come back right after these messages. Okay. Hey, we're back with Carolyn Cox, who is the chairman of the Pima County Republican Party. And this is recruitment day. She gets a chance to recruit me. We've been talking about all kinds of things. And before we move on to the two issues that I talked about uh, that we were going to address in this segment, let me just pin you to the mat on this issue of the polarization. Uh, bottom line for me as a independent voter right now is just the frustration that two parties aren't aren't working together so what do you see the republican party actually doing to try to reach out across the aisle and and end this polarization and end this deadlock is that even can the republican party even do that on its own what do you where do you see that going well it's hard to tell what politicians are going to do because i don't know i'd like for them to do a lot of things that they haven't done in the past but but i i do think that when you actually require bills that come up that they have to be debated and then you get to hear both sides and then when they vote you know people who listen to c-span or who are really interested in that kind of thing can hear what the arguments are and they can see that the politicians are at least making a case for what they want to do what we have right now is just basically you know i I mean they tried they took away the filibuster rule so that now the party in in power gets to appoint judges without any kind of uh, approval from the senate i mean there are a lot of things that have been done that have moved us away from a constitutional government and and i would like to get back to more of that okay now let's talk about social issues um, let's say that I'm registered independent, mm-hmm. which I am. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I actually like a lot of the, and then now I'm talking about me personally. Um, now I'm, um, I, I really believe in a lot of things that Republicans believe in. I, I, it worries me this entitlement society we've gone to. It worries me about giving money to people that just maybe they A, aren't deserving, and B, ultimately it hurts them more than it helps them. I worry about that. I worry about the fact that there are now more hands outstretched asking for money to be plopped into them than there are pockets to be thrust into these just days. about there's 45 percent right so i worry about all of that i worried about the fact that the people who want something from me uh now outnumbered the people who have something to give because the taxpayers are now in the minority uh but I also worry a little bit about the republicans social agenda i have friends that are gay i've got uh, relatives who are gay uh and and i worry that um if I go Republican, that I'm going to hurt my friends and relatives. So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I guess the way that I look at it is I still, I still consider marriage to be between a man and a woman. But I understand the legal issues that the gay community feels, and I don't have any problem with whatever, you know, some kind of an agreement, like that you can... You can be with your partner if he's in the hospital. You can be if you're with your partner if he's sick. You have the ability to, you know, inheritance and things like that. So I, I, I don't uh, oppose that. So I don't have to worry that, that my gay friends and relatives are going to be shut out, but they're not you wouldn't be in favor of allowing them to to marry like a man and a woman would be allowed well i i i just think you have to figure out what is the definition of of marriage and and it has always been defined as a union between a man and a woman okay um what about workplace protections for people with that that uh, are same sex right now it's one of the last frontiers yeah uh if i were an employer and i wanted to discriminate against someone who is of same sex preference i'd probably be allowed to do that 
Although it's becoming more problematic oh, I, I all the time. There are all I don't kinds think of, so. Yeah, yeah but, I don't think so. And there's you no know, formal, there are no formal protections. So do there need to be? I well, mean, do we need more? I don't, you know, as having been an employer, I didn't care. We didn't care. And, you know, it was even a long time before I discovered that some of the people that worked for us were gay. It didn't make any difference. I only cared about what they could do. Uh, and, and I still think that's the case. I still think that employers, um, you know, they hire you to do a job, and that's all that there. That, that should be all there is to it. In, in your private life, should not make any difference. Right now, one of the one of the downsides to executive fiat is that the next party can come along and undo it. So, one of the things the president has just done is he signed this executive order giving protection to lesbian and gay and transgender people uh, who are work for federal contractors for people who take money from the federal government. Um, is that something that, um, first of all, and the reason he had reason he decided to do it by executive fiat is because he couldn't get Congress to do it. Mm-hmm. So where do you think the Republican Party would go to that, or would go with that if they become the party in power? Well, I think if any of those kind of things, if they are uh, open to debate, there will be discussion. And I think that people will come to a, you know, a, a conclusion that will be acceptable. Um, I think I'd like to pin you down more on that. Well, but I'm, I promise I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate you. But I would just say that um, you know, for my for my lesbian and gay friends and relatives, uh, I you know I kind of I'm looking for more than just it, it'll work itself out. I guess is, and I'm hoping I'm well, hoping you would tell I, me more I, about I what th- I could expect if the Republicans become I, power. I would think that if anyone felt like that they were being discriminated in the workplace, it's pretty easy to file a suit against your employer. I, I don't think they're much at risk. Okay. Let's talk about the big one, which mm-hmm. we haven't talked about so far. Uh, here I am, middle-of-the-road person, and um, I'm concerned about immigration. Uh, now, I, I don't think that we should just say no to whether you call it a refugee crisis or if you want to just call it a flood of illegals or, or whatever you want to, however you want to talk about it. Uh, I'm concerned that we shut them all out, but on the other hand, I don't feel we should let them all in either. I'm confused. Well, yeah. I don't know where to go on this. And, I think so, you follow the yeah. law. We have we have laws in place about how immigration is supposed to work. There is a process to go through. I know. I mean, I have many friends who are not, you know, native-born Americans or from Guatemala or places like that, and they followed the rules. Uh, they applied. And, and that's the deal. I don't think that what what he's doing now is correct because he's he's violating what the federal the federal government is in charge of, you know, protecting our borders and following the rules. And that's what he should be doing. And he's not doing it. So you'd be you think basically existing law is sufficient. It just needs to be enforced. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm saying that the existing law needs to be enforced. Now, if we need, if we feel like we need to make some changes to the laws, in other words, some people feel like that uh, people who've gotten into uh, engineering degrees, medical degrees, and their visa expires, and then we kick them out. I think that's probably wrong, and I think we should petition uh, Congress that you know if there's a job for them here that you know they should be able to stay okay so and, one of the things that's going on is you take the unaccompanied minors mm-hmm. and they're coming across we're grabbing them I know. we're putting them in detention that's an example of following the law that's doing exactly what the law says would the republicans suggest changing that law to, to say that okay you know what maybe these these kids shouldn't get these special protections that the law now outlines for them well i think that what they're trying to do is to get faster um deportation to do a faster turnaround to say that, you know, because you're right, we cannot take care of every uh, body who, who would like to have our lifestyle. But what we can do is that we can convince them that they could have the same thing, too. You have to understand Mexico, Mexico has more resources than we do. They could be more prosperous than we were if they followed the rule You're of law. About and pri- yeah, and yeah, private resources. Yeah, and, and private property rights, but they don't. None of the South American countries that are under dictators do that. But okay. they could. I mean, Argentina used to have the highest standard of living in the world. So you would be in favor of, of changes in the law that would require faster deportations. And I have to point out, I put my journalist hat on just for a second, uh, there's a difference between faster processing and faster deportations. So which, which of those two things do you think the law needs to, needs to do? Do you think we need faster, pro- faster processing, which would probably allow based on past statistics what i've seen probably about a third of them would get to stay or do you think we just need to say enough is enough we need changes in the law that are just going to 
send these folks back yeah i really think enough is enough because it, you know for years and years and years we followed the rules people came here they i mean all of us have uh, probably european ancestors who came here so i i, th- I think we're not hostile to immigrants but i think it has to be done legally and not just be trying to sneak people in now so uh let's talk a little bit now about the, the mothers that are coming in with their children they are um, also entitled they're not as entitled to the same protections they really should go into detention and normally would it's just our facilities are overrun so they're giving them they're lining them to get on buses they're lining them to go wherever they would want so i'm guessing the republicans would say you know what we shouldn't be doing that so what would you do with let all me these tell folks? you what the libertarians say and i think this is great they say don't build a fence around the borders build a fence around the welfare system so i would say if they want to come here and work that's one thing if they want to come here just to get the various welfare benefits we can't afford to keep doing that so would you would you buy into something like that you know i might now let's talk a little bit about uh the same subject great article in the newspaper this past sunday maybe it was sunday before i don't you know i'm losing my mind (laughs) But uh, I had a guest on the show, the reporter for the story, and she profiled a, a, a Guatemalan immigrant that came in with her child. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was fleeing. In my opinion, it looked like she was fleeing poverty, although there was a, there was a body found in the woods or in the forest, and so they used that yeah. as, as something that, that certainly concerned her. But it really seemed, you know, we, we could make the claim, same claim in Tucson as a reason to go to Guatemala uh, if you're just going to talk, 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 you know, point to bodies that are found. So what it really was was, A, poverty, and B, uh, the, a tipping point had been reached in which these folks all now seem to believe that they come here, they'll get a free pass. Right. And she got one. Right. Uh, but now she's trying to decide whether, now that she's reached her final destination, whether she should report to immigration authorities as ordered or whether she should stay in the shadows and just hope to tough it out until the next amnesty comes along or whatever. Uh, how would her life have been different if the Republicans were having their way right now with immigration? Well, I suspect if, it, and I don't know, because it's hard to say what, you know, what they would have decided on, but my feeling still is that they should be following the, the following the laws, and so she should not have been enticed to come here in the first place. And that would mean basically saying to the United States of America, quit inviting these folks yeah. over here by way of all the, the jobs we give them that are not supposed to be given to them. And all those kinds of things, basically re- removing that incentive. Well, I think that would be. A, see, I don't understand the businessmen because when they think they're getting a bargain, I don't think they're getting a bargain when they're paying them below uh, level wages because they're having to pay for the welfare, the education of the children, the incarceration, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think they're coming out ahead. And I think we'd be a lot better off just to be honest about it. Hmm, interesting. All right, now let me address the final thing that this is sort of the. I saved this one for last because as I'm. As I'm considering whether to join the Republican Party, one of the things that concerns me is whether the Republican Party would actually welcome somebody like me. And here's why I say that. Uh, recently, uh, the, the term has come up, and you hear it a lot yet, uh, we're, a lot these days, rhino, Republican in name only. And we have a, a strong contingent of the Republican Party here in Pima County. Uh, we've got a couple of folks, uh, Frank Antonori, amongst others, uh, sort of has a blacklist going of Republicans. He would, <laughs> yeah. he would prefer you not to vote for those Republicans. He'd rather see a Democrat, um, which just strikes me as as um, as unusual. So is it, now you take somebody like me, okay, middle of the road. I believe in, I really do believe in a lot of what the Republicans believe in. Not so much on some of the social issues. Uh, I have views on abortion that's slightly different from the, that differ slightly from the Republican platform. And is somebody like me going to be welcome, or am I going to be put on a rhino list and run the hell out? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put you on a rhino list and try to run you out. No. Tell no. me then how, would, how you would welcome somebody who maybe believes in much of the Republican platform and many of the Republican planks, but not all of them. Is well, that, I think, am I still somebody you would want, yeah, and, how, and I, would I, I feel think, welcome? I think you find most of us are that way. I don't think that you think that there are many people who are just absolutely that hardcore right down the center. Because we have, we have understood for a long time that, uh, you know, we don't, I mean, you and I agree on a lot of things, but we won't agree on everything. And it's the same way with other people in my party. So let me, let me really put you on the spot, because you're the chairman of the Pima County Republican Party. How do you deal with 
members of your party that want to run other members of your party off because they feel that they're not Republican enough. Right. Yeah, it's a problem. Uh, the blacklist that you were talking about is a problem. I don't like that. Um, but, uh, I, you know, people have, in America, we still have the freedom to write and say what we want to write and say. So you just have to, you know, there, there are always one or two people who will violently disagree with, with you, and that's the way it is. Well, I would say that any movement will attract certain kinds of extremists. Sure. Absolutely. You know, the one topic we haven't talked, and I don't know where the clock is, so we probably We're don't fine. have we got, time. We have some time. But that's on the, the real entitlements, which are Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and actually Obamacare, and the interest on the debt. I, I, I don't know how we're going to deal with that. I don't know how. I mean, I know that my kids can't pay what, what uh, they owe today. Um, I don't think most anybody can. Right. So, and how are we going to back that back? And and you know, I I uh, I think it's really critical. So here's my final. And now I'm on the tipping point. I'm thinking, okay, so you would you would welcome me, even though I don't necessarily agree with every Republican platform. Absolutely. Um, and um, and it'd be okay for me to be a Republican, for instance, and be in favor of gay rights. You wouldn't run me off for that. No. Uh, but now I have one last concern, and here you can you can address it for me. Um, you know, I'm not happy with President Obama's deficits, but I have to remember that it wasn't President Obama, at least if my statistics are correct in my mind, he wasn't the first to have a trillion dollar deficit. That was George Bush, a Republican, yes. whom I voted, yes. you know, but didn't vote for, but came close to voting for. Yes. Um, I, um, um, but I thought he was going to be, I did think he was going to be a good president. And I was really disappointed w- with Medicare Part D, which was just a huge entitlement. And I'm th- now I'm thinking, okay, even if I vote Republican now, I can't be assured of getting the deficit under control. So assure me on that point. Well, not only was that a problem, but so was the Fannie and, and uh, Freddie, which I really objected to the fact that he did not, uh, you know, really get on his bull, bully pulpit and get that stopped because that's what caused the housing market to collapse. So I, I'm kind of with you. I don't like big government Republicans. And um, I, I really, I really like free market type ideas and smaller government where and let the private sector solve a lot of these problems so if i were to come over to the republican party i would be free to duke it out maybe with other republicans who, uh, who don't feel the same <laughs> yeah, way sure and we could fight about uh fight about that and ha- and move forward and get a party at least press for a party platform a party planks that are going to appeal to somebody like me who thinks the deficit's going to destroy us. I mean, I'm more oh, concerned too. about the deficit than anything. I am too. So, I am uh, too. So I'd be able to, um, while recognizing that the Republicans sometimes have not always done what other Republicans like me would have said you need mm-hmm. to do, uh, I would at least be welcome to come into the party and fight for those kinds of things and we could fight the good fight together. That's what, right. that's what I'm hearing you tell me. Right. Absolutely. In fact, if you remember, Frank Antonori led the charge some years ago after Janet Napolitano left us with something like a $3 billion debt and managed to work that back down. The, the problem was that because of all of the stuff that has been passed in propositions where the legislature can't cut them, they ended up having to cut a lot of, out of education, and they got a right. lot well, of You hear in my voice mm-hmm. that... I believe a lot of the things that Frank Antonori believes in. Mm-hmm. In fact, I met Frank Antonori, and uh, you know he used to come. He guest commentates as a guest commentator on the John Justice Show, right. which used to be right next to me in the in the Channel Nine newsroom. I met okay. him. I like him, and uh, and what I'm what I'm saying right now about the deficit. I mean, he's somebody that in this particular case, I would want him to fight against other Republicans that Absolutely. aren't that aren't as deficit conscious. Absolutely. Having said that, though, um, I think that there are. There, there's a line that really shouldn't be crossed in pursuit of political ideology, and I would like to see uh, the you know, Republican Party at one time, especially under Reagan, was known as the party of the Big Tent. Come on in if you believe with four out of if right. you believe with four out of six of the things we all believe in, you're one of us. Right. It doesn't seem as welcoming lately, and so that's something that you know concerns me. And that's where I part company with Frank. I don't think he should have a blacklist, but I do think he should fight the fight. Yeah, you know? I, I do too. And you know, you think about um, the, uh, Scott Smith, who's running for governor. Uh, when he took over in Mesa, I think they had a sixty-two million dollar deficit, and he managed to clean that up by laying off some city workers and, and cutting uh, the size of government. And that's what I would like to see. And I'd be happy to to you know talk with anybody about that. So final, your final recruitment line. Here's your final marketing pitch. All right, and, and uh, I'm, I'm you know a marketing guy from way back because news people have to know how to marketing. Your final pitch to me is I'm on the fence, just trying to decide whether to join the Republican Party. 
What's your What's your final pitch line to me? My final pitch line is that I believe that we believe in personal responsibility and an opportunity society, and not making people dependent on government. And I think that is the greatest failing of the Democrat Party is this whole idea of thinking it's okay to have. 45% of our people on welfare, I think that's a tragedy. I think it was a tragedy to extend uh, unemployment compensation to like two years. You get people who are unemployed for two years, they're probably not reemployable. I think that's unfair. And um, do you know um, Star Parker? Do you know that name? It's familiar to me. Well, but she was a welfare mother at the time of Clinton when he when he finally agreed to cut, you know, do a time limit and kick people off. And she's written a book, and she's now a very famous, fairly wealthy woman, um, who said that she was so glad to have her freedom to spend her own money the way she wanted to spend it, and that she was grateful for having been kicked off of welfare. So bottom line is, if I join your party, we're going to work together for an America that's more self-sufficient, less reliant on big government, and my life will be better? Yep. Okay. Carolyn Cox, thank you for joining (laughs) us. And by the way, I I let you throw out a lot of figures there that I didn't challenge you on. So (laughs) some of my journalistic friends are probably saying, you really should have challenged her. But I I don't have those figures in front of me, so you've out-debated me on that. But I will say that uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and you've been a wonderful guest. And uh, the political uh, season coming up is going to be really interesting. Yeah, it is. Thank you for being on Power Talk 1210. The Forest Car Show will continue after these messages. Okay. Thank you.